am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only for God. Ah, I love it. It's wonderful to have these musicians up here. And today is the first Sunday of October, our zeal month, and I'll be focusing on some of that energy. The title is Overcoming Challenges. Now this came forward by reading about Stonehenge, one of those great mysteries of the world. And there have been scientists looking and probing and trying to figure out how this thing was built. Frankly, if I had to build this today, I think I'd have a little bit of a challenge just to make it work. Probably be like, I oh, that contractor. But they found something new. Now, they know that it began to be built in 3100 B.C. And the question was, the central altar stone, which is 6,000 tons and 16 feet, how did they get it there? Because in southern England, there is no big rocks like that. And they had thought it had come from South Wales, but no, it didn't come. It came from Scotland, hundreds of miles away. And this is a Neolithic society. This is before the wheel was invented. So you've got forests, you've got bogs, you've got rivers, and you've got a people that have figured out we want to get this rock way down there. Now, you can guess there'd be some of the people in the group say, that's impossible. Not going to do it. But they did it. Now, the, the best way they could do that is by boat. And so this, this revealing has told scientists that this Neolithic society was far more advanced than they thought. I think that's fabulous and a great way to start a talk about overcoming challenges. This is in our scripture, Ecclesiastes, <laughs> Right, another vow. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, uh, chapter 9, verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Now, metaphysically, this is whatever you do, do it with a God centered knowing. Because that might that affects the entire universe. And it's created us and filled us with everything that we need is available to us. All we need to do is ask. Quite benevolent. So also might refers to our very faculty of zeal, which is that energy within us and in God. It's our God-given energy of spiritual zeal is how we move things, how we get it going. How do, we, how do we get from here to there? It's going to be using our zeal, our enthusiasm. And that allows us to overcome challenges. You don't move a great big 12,000-pound rock from Scotland down to southern England with okay we'll do it <laughs> how much do we get in our life when we say oh maybe someday maybe someday is like saying never this is not going to happen it's a good thing that we have a good testament to this life and Charles Fillmore makes this clear, our co-founder of Unity. To be without zeal is to be without the zest of living. Zeal and enthusiasm incite to glorious achievement in every aim 
and ideal that the mind conceives. Zeal is the impulse to go forward, the urge behind all things. So how do you get into the shower or the bathtub? It takes zeal. If you're going to brush your teeth, it takes zeal. If you're going to drive to H-E-B, it's going to take zeal. Everything that we do, what's behind it is a movement of energy. And that energy is a little bit orange, and it's moving in our lives and bringing forth wonderful things. Now, that story about Owen and, and birthdays and me celebrating every day, it took zeal and enthusiasm to do that. How much of a party is it going to be if it's like, I don't know. It just doesn't work that way. We need to put our energy, our life behind things. And a zest for living doesn't mean that we need to be loud. We can have zest for living by being very peaceful and serene and balanced. That takes enthusiasm and zest as well. Overcoming challenges is a choice to not buy into the impossibility. Martha Smock, I, a wise woman who I turned to many times, she has wonderful books, and she was head of Daily Word for many years. She says here, if you have felt limited in any way, it's time for a change. A change of thought about yourself, about your life. A change from any belief in limitation to a belief in the unlimited power of God in you, which waits expression through you. Now this is, we talk about the God within over and over again, but it's worth speaking because it's important to remember. There's an unlimited presence that's unchanging within us. And when we tap into that, when we stand in the presence of that love, anything's possible. Now, there's no place where God is not. Does that mean that God has limitations? No. God is completely unlimited. And I believe that within God... Everything is possible. Like, how do you figure out how to get a great big rock from here over to here? Inspired. Our lives are inspired. And haven't we all faced situations in our life that we needed to make a change? We needed to grow and, 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 and challenge ourselves to achieve something. I know many of us have done that. Anyone want to share something in their life that they took a change and went for it and achieved it? We had a cat that moved into our garage and Connie and Megan fell in love with the cat and I had this perceived allergy to cats. So I decided to be very scientific about it and over the course of two or three months, I exposed myself in minuscule doses to the cat till I basically desensitized myself and he lived with us for 18 years. <laughs> I love that. Because nothing's impossible. Any other story? Yes, Auntie. Well, one time I, I flew down with a team, there were 10 of us, and we went down into Honduras, and we flew out in teams of two on helicopters, and I translated for the, the, the doctors that I was helping. And uh, when I was crossing a river, there was this American man, and I go, what are you doing down here? He says, I have an orphanage down here. And I said, well, what do you need at your orphanage? And he says, oh, we need everything. So I went back to the hospital where I was working and I sent out the message to the floors, give me all you've got, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna send it down to Honduras. And I got a stove and wall-to-wall -wall carpeting and 50 pound sacks of beans and rice. I didn't even think about how the heck I was gonna get it down there. And pretty soon this guy comes down and he says, 
I happen to have an 18 wheeler. If you pay for the gas, I'll drive it down there. And I said, yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And there's a part of our small mind that could look and say, it's impossible. I can't get that down there. But if we keep open, then everything is possible. That's a beautiful story. One more. Yes. Yeah. I actually lived in Colorado before I moved here. It was during the pandemic time. But I really wanted to move closer to my family. And I already had an established job there. You know, I already had my own stuff there. Um, but I was taking a workshop at the time. And um, and basically, it inspired me to just move back home and buy a house. And so I I literally just quit my job. And I came out here and bought a house and employed. And, and, and during that time too, I thought, well, I had some, I had savings, right? But during that time too, I was like, well, it was, I was kind of worried, you know, financially too at that time. But I, I always figured, okay, well, I'm gonna be taken care of. And sure enough, like, like magic, like I would have just enough that I needed to keep going and to like have my current job now. But, but my point being was just like, you know, I, I took the risk and I just believed that I was gonna be taken care of, and that's attractive. Yeah. A story of making the decision to move from Colorado when you don't know anything about what's going to be happening on the other side, but knowing it's the right thing. That's it. It's, it's knowing that you made the offer, we need everything, and making the decision, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get whatever I can to support this orphanage. And that thrust, that energy, that decision to say, okay, there's a love of this feline in the garage. I'm being called to accept it in the home. What am I going to do? I'm going to do what I can to get over my allergy. It's a testament to our lives that we can embody these principles and allow source to make things happen in our lives that seems like magic. But in God, there is no magic. Just one moment, Tom. There is no magic. In God, everything is miraculous. Everything. If, if it's a God thing, it is God. It's amazing Godness in our lives. We perceive it as magic or a miracle, but in reality, it's just living what we're here to be. We're here to be the expression of God in the world and allow God moving through us to actualize these things. So these are beautiful stories. Yes, Tom. Every time I come in this church and even sitting in these chairs it is a manifestation of everything we're talking about because the idea was from a tiny little house in this building happened by everything you're talking about. That's right. That's right. The founders came out, they bought the land, and then they built it with their own hands, and then they hired a minister. <laughs> it's faith. It's applying the very foundation of what we teach in practical terms to create something that's really quite magnificent. And it's always available to us. And overcoming challenges, simply overcoming everything, anything we want to change. And what's true about change? It's going to happen. Change is going to happen. The only thing guaranteed in this life is change. And Charles Fillmore, returning back to him, he says, when you refuse to see negative things, they will disappear. And you will be surprised to see you will change. So if you focus on the negative, what are you going to get? If you focus on the positive, what are you going to get? If you focus on the love, what are you going to get? Love. If you focus on the shame, what are you going to get? Shame. 
If you focus on the doubt, what are you going to get? It sounds like whatever we focus on is what we're going to get. And if we have a lot of negativity in our life, our own thinking or the people around us just loving to talk negative, if we just back ourselves, give it time out from the negative thoughts, they disappear. Because if the, if the unchanging, eternal presence is unconditional love, what's our basic essence? Unconditional love. Is there anything negative in unconditional love? No. There's no negative energy. There's no negative force. Because there's only one power, one presence in our lives and in the universe. Just one. It's really beautiful. And our personal exploration is kind of simple to remember. It's the three P's of change. So the first one is patience. And if you don't have much patience, you can learn patience. Patience is a trait that we can get a skill at. Get comfortable with just taking a breath. Being centered. Opening ourselves to peace and serenity. Practicing prayer and meditation. Patience is that place where we can recharge like our battery gets recharged with patience. The second one is persistence. We need to choose again and again and again. And if it's a big challenge, again and again and again and again and again. Persistence is giving it even when we don't see how the outcome's going to be. When someone says, oh, well, we could bind some logs together, and the logs float on the water, and it takes patience and it takes persistence to go and get the logs and make it all work, and then how do you get the big old rock onto the raft or off the raft to the site it wasn't impossible because they did it. And they're not walking around where you could just ask them. Perseverance is giving that all. It allows us to open to having help. Perseverance is how we navigate through the pitfalls or the challenges. Like Lantine's story. Okay, anyone got stuff? I'm going to take it to the orphanage. And whoop, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And perseverance is, okay, I can do, I don't know how, I'm going to do this. And then, oh, I got a truck. I can drive it down there. Patience, persistence, and perseverance gives us the success to navigate through our change to overcoming any challenge. And a challenge might just be getting out of the bed. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's just hard to get out of bed. And once I'm out, it's like, I better hold on. And then, you know, after a little patience, a little persistence, I can walk into the other room. I don't know about you, but this happens to me on a regular basis. I'm no spring chicken. Well, I'm here to speak truth. We are ready, yes? We're going to open ourselves to overcoming any challenge in our life and allow it to be the best
best experience because life's worth living. And that's the truth. Thank you.